fuck? <laughs> Matthew Burton, branding expert, 2021. <laughs> I was going to sing you one back first. <laughs> we'll do that on the next intro, why not? Yeah. Thank you very much. That's yeah, you, very kind. You could use that as your new ringtone. Okay, I want you to put a little sound bed under that, uh, so it sounds even better. Can it sound better than that? Probably couldn't, it was perfect. Hi, I'm Matt. I'm Chris. It's a monkey Monday, and it's 2021. Who'd have thought it? It's like the future. Yeah, suddenly... We're old. I know. I How's remember that? being 1985 and writing that down in my, on my homework. What? Writing what down? 2021? 1985. <laughs> <laughs> well, yeah. Okay, good. <laughs> <laughs> what are we talking about today? I don't Matt? know, but it's a killer start, isn't it? <laughs> oh, we're we thought we would talk about naming a thing. Okay, yes. It's probably one of the hardest things out there. People think maybe it's really easy. And we're kind of going down into not naming your business as such, but maybe naming a product. Because it's kind of, you know, naming a business is a different conversation. So we thought we'd, we thought we'd share um, just a simple workshop <clears throat> that you can do yourself. You don't need to come to us or anyone else. You can just do this internally and see how you go. Yeah, and this is based on a workshop we did with a mm -hmm. client of ours and uh, the different ways in which we found we could uh, find different names for a product. Yeah, and it's often, uh, it can be really, really challenging. And so the first thing to think about really is, is to make sure you do your homework, I guess. <clears throat> make sure, the simple stuff, make sure the decision makers are in on it because you don't want to do all this work and then it go up the chain and then somebody go, I don't like that. So um, make sure you build a little team and everyone's involved who are going to be making the decisions are in that team. Yeah, we can't stress that enough. You get so many projects that are derailed right at the end. And it's with naming, it's with anything else mm. that you need to get those key decision makers in right at the very beginning. Yeah. So let's just smash into it like we're doing some sort of uh, New Year's exercises. Oh, yes, go. Go. Right. Uh, golden rules. Make it short. Make it memorable. Make it unique. Yes. Uh, like, uh, can you think of any amazing names of products? Go. <laughs> I could cut this bit out so it feels it, it's uh, like you haven't had any thinking time at all. <laughs> I can't think of any. Most names are dreadful as it comes in it, and that is the point. Bing! <laughs> Bing! That's a TV character for kids. Most names, most people spend a lot of time on names, and it doesn't actually matter that much. Yeah, I think that's, that's a really important part, isn't it, really? Um, I think, going back to those rules, making it short, the reason you make it short is so that it's um, easy to write out, it's easy to find, uh, it helps it achieve number two, which is memorable, can you regurgitate it to somebody? Um, and making it unique is obviously important because you don't want to get done. You don't want to get sued for um, bringing out a new T-shirt company called Bing. <laughs> and not selling little rabbit things. Anyway, yes, yeah, so I would say, uh, yeah, the, think of the names uh, outside that you like. And they're all sort of, I'm, I'm thinking of things like Ring, Doorbell. Uh, Coke, that's very memorable. And they even shortened it down from Coca-Cola. Yeah, and Nest. It, Nest, yes. Yeah. All one. those things are, everyone's trying to simplify it as much as they possibly can. Uh, some long names can work, but uh, it's a rule of thumb. Follow that and you're probably not going to go too far wrong, uh, especially when you're thinking of your, your product. Okay, uh, let's, let's fly into uh, what, what we should be looking at to begin with. So um, do your homework, look at your audiences. So who is it for? Because you're going to need that in the workshop. So describe your audiences. Um, do your due diligence with your own products because maybe you're releasing a product here and you've got a load of other products over here. So if all of your other products are called the BJ1000. <laughs> Interesting name. <laughs> you should, so you should maybe call your next product the BJ2000. Potentially, that could be the next product. And what is the association of that new product to your old one? You maybe wouldn't call it something really off the wall like Matilda because <laughs> it wouldn't sit well next to BJ1000. Yeah, exactly. It's Maya, as in a previous vlog. It's got yeah. to be most advanced yet acceptable. Yes. Now, again, we like to throw in a bit of a creative destruction grenade here. 
You might find once you open the world up to the new names and new ideas for the new product, perhaps it's time to bring everything else into that new family. So it's an interesting thing, but you need to know what those are called at the moment. Mm. Um, you could start as well with some visualizations. We recommend doing that. Get a mood board. Look at your stuff you like, competitors, things like that. Create a bit of a mood board. You could do that in your workshop. Um, we've been using Jamboard to do this stuff. We, we vlogged about that the other day. Um, it's pretty good because you can just create that mood board together and you can talk over lots of different pieces and it gets your creative mind uh, going. Yeah, exactly. And uh, in one of the sessions we did for a client, um, it helped us come up with about a thousand names. Yeah. So um, what we did then and what you can do is we break this down into nine exercises. So we start with the simple stuff really so exercise number one you're going to put graphics up uh <laughs> yeah put, yes i'll one. put some graphics up exercise number one start with the obvious and maybe look at your existing products so again let's go back to bj1000 <laughs> so the obvious thing would be something similar to that following that nomenclature um so look at what you have, come up with ideas around that, and that should be a fairly easy process. Yeah, why stray too far off the path when you might have a solution already there? Exercise two, uh, product aesthetics. Get a picture of your product, if you've got one, hopefully you have. If it's a service, it might be slightly more difficult, but um, describe it, because it could be as simple as that. If it's a grey box, write down grey box, mm. because maybe that's all you need to call it. Yeah, and maybe that would be remarkable as one of your competitors, they wouldn't be calling their products that grey box, but your, the people who are going into your shop or asking for your product may just be going, I just want that grey box. Yeah, or maybe there's something on the actual product itself that's interesting or unique, maybe something, you know, rotates or flips or hovers or mm. disappears. I'm not sure how creative your product is. Wow. <laughs> <laughs> All right, next. Exercise three, what does it do? functions old school marketing here really so what are the functions of it um could be something in that so if it's i don't know if it's a gun yes the shoots bullets the shoot bullet 3000 exactly what does your bj 1000 do <laughs> yeah well i'll I'll, I'll I'll send you a product link <laughs> later <laughs> exercise four it's a good one this week. Uh, yeah, it is. It's a good one. <laughs> Exercise for who does it help? So you could list all of the different types of people that might use your product. So I don't know, maybe engineers use it. Oh, yeah. The engineering helper 2000. <laughs> <laughs> We're really good at naming things. Don't don't take this well, as that. Know. So perhaps, I don't know, maybe, uh, maybe it helps walkers, for instance, or ramblers. So maybe it's the ramble master. Oh, yes. You're on a roll now. I know. He's our lead <laughs> creative. He's our creative director. Well, the thing is, uh, you spend a day doing this. You don't yeah, do yeah. it in. A, you don't do it in two seconds. No. <laughs> and no. you're not. You're not allowed to steal any of these names either. If I see you release the Ramble Master 2000, I want a cut. <laughs> Exercise uh, five. How does it help them? What benefits uh, does it give the end user? You oh, can yes. do an example, Chris. Well, um, off the top of your head, go. Like. Um, the something around a tea's made, because I like drinking tea, and maybe you would call that the Refresh 5000. Mm. What about if it was a toilet paper company? Um, the Clean Bum 250. <laughs> <laughs> you see how easy this is? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> okay. <laughs> uh, we, we, we might have to cut... Until we're <laughs> we're not uh, laughing anymore, uh, we're going to be serious. We're going to we're going to be serious. Right, serious. It's going to go in the blooper reel. That's fine. Oh. <laughs> what exercise are we on, Matt? Exercise. <laughs> this is going to make my editing really tricky. Oh, oh okay. Oh, oh man. <laughs> oh yeah. <laughs> Oh, God. I'm going to have to fast forward through all this. <laughs> uh, the clean bum 250's killed me. Well, there's probably 250 sheets in a roll. That's good. Clean bum. <laughs> <laughs> you 
You did ask me. <laughs> I'm a creative chap. You know, I, I came up with toilet roll that you'll definitely buy. <laughs> Clean bum 250. <laughs> uh, okay. No edit here. Next up, Matt. Exercise seven. <laughs> <sighs> Exercise seven. Word or name? <laughs> <laughs> oh, no. Uh, exercise seven. Word or named association. So we could go back to T. Yes. T's a good one. Yes. So um, if you think about oh, T. I can feel a game coming on. It is a game. If you think about T, you could think about biscuits. If you think about biscuits, you might think about other stuff. So I don't know if any of you are old enough to remember Mallets Mallets. <laughs> Do some word association. Bounce that around. No idea is a bad idea. You can end up in a really interesting place when you do that kind of process. Um, exercise eight is where you can go bonkers. Deviant, fanciful, abstract words. By this time, your creative juices should be flowing. You might need a roll of Clean Bum 250. <laughs> <laughs> yes. And... Uh, you could just put down anything here. So anything that's abstract or fanciful, you can make up words. Uh, you might find something that just feels really great and, and fits and is short and fits all of your scoring goals. And lastly, you could then take all of them boards, all of those ideas you've got, and start creating, in exercise nine, compound words or synonyms. So you stick a couple of words together maybe, from different boards, see how they feel. Um, you're looking maybe in this part of the process to create something that's just really unique and really stands out and you've never heard before because naming stuff is hard. And it's hard because everything is gone. <laughs> well, and it's also hard because um, you can come up with a thousand names quite easily that would satisfy the brief, but you've got different... Um, people inside your business who have very subjective thoughts on that name and at the end of the day it doesn't really matter but you've got to try and get it past all these people and you don't want to end up with the blandest thing in the world. A really good trick to make sure you don't fall into that trap is to choose how you're going to score and how you're going to measure the success of it. So um, it could just be five main things and you sort of score them out of ten when we look at the score sheets that we've done in the past for companies, we try and we try and make sure that these scores are blocked. So there could be one up here that scored really, 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 really well, but it doesn't necessarily make it the best name. So you could say, look, anything over 20 out of 40 is probably fair game. It's probably quite good. So really, you're looking, you're looking to get rid of the, the rubbish in that process, in that scoring process. You want to kind of go, look, after this certain score... All of this should go, and these are the nests that we should choose from. And then <clears throat> don't present them in a vacuum. It's the most important thing. If you just present the name out there, not in any context, it won't mean anything to anybody. So create a little poster, write a slogan for it. Um, put some imagery and literature around that name and see how it fits and reads and say it out loud and present that to the people who are going to be making the final decisions because that's the real key thing. Yes, and those people making the final decisions, they need to be thinking like a customer of yours rather than try, the name shouldn't be trying to please them. It should be trying to please people who are buying from you. Yes, and wear your audience hat. You did it at the start. You did your audience homework. Put your audience hat on once you look at that literature and see how you would feel. Yes, so I hope that's been useful and I've managed to edit around the laughter. Well, you're not going to laugh again. No, I'm fine. Okay, good. And don't forget, if you need a clean bum, <laughs> it's Clean Bum 250.